This is a negative that was that is printed on acetate. Acetate is just a clear, you know, piece of material. And uh, what you're going to do with this negative when you create it, you're going to take your cyanotype paper or your anthotype paper. You're going to lay it on top like this. Okay. You're going to go out in the sunlight. You're going to put the negative on top. You're going to expose it to sunlight. And then when you remove it, you're going to have your negative on the paper. But it's no longer going to be a negative. It's going to be a positive. The website that I want you to call to go to is called Photopea. So www.photopea.com. Photoshop is all about layers, and I'm not going to get into that right now. But one thing I want you guys to understand is that layers are like glasses, okay? So if you put on sunglasses, the world can look different colors, right? So if I put on red sunglasses right now, the world will look red. But the world isn't actually red. It just looks red. Photoshop is the same way. Right now, we're going to put black and white sunglasses on our photograph so that it turns into black and white. Let me show you where it's at. So you're going to go down here to the bottom of your layers palette, because that's what it's called. Oops, I zoomed in by accident. See down here, there's a black and white circle. Okay, click on that. These are your adjustment layers. Before you turn your image black and white, look at your image right now and ask yourself, what are the dominant colors in my image? My image has a lot of green and it has some orange in it. So you're gonna go here, then you're gonna go to where it says black and white. Now, my image had a lot of red and a lot of orange. So that means that the two sliders that are going to make the most change on my image are the red slider and the yellow slider. Now, the reason why I say yellow is because there is no orange slider, but the closest color to orange is yellow, right? So watch. Now I can change how the red appears on my image. And my butterfly had a lot of red in it, right? It's a lot of orange. Also yellow, watch how much the yellow affects everything, okay? My image also had a lot of green in it. So right now you get to play with these sliders and you're probably wondering, well, Ms. Scarf, like, what do I do? There is no correct answer to this. It's, do you want this part of the image to look brighter? Do you want this image to look darker? For your negative to work really well for your cyanotype prints, I can tell you that you want a high contrast negative. What that means is you want areas that are dark and you want areas that are light. In other words, let me show you what you don't want, okay? You don't want this. This image would not print really well. What you want in your image is a range of tones. You want your image to have black, white, and as many different types of grays as possible. This image right now, the way I edited it, it's missing whites. It's missing the brighter tones. So when you edit your image, you definitely want to have some pure white, some pure black, and then you want to have a beautiful range of tones because that's what's going to produce the clearest image. You definitely wanna push your blacks to be a little bit darker and your whites to be a little bit brighter. That's what it means to do high contrast, okay? So here is my edit. When I'm finished, I'm gonna click right there where it says Pro, see right there? I'm gonna click on that and that gets rid of that. Okay. Now we have a black and white image, but this is not a negative. So this is the last thing I'm gonna show you today before we go. We need to flip this image so that the blacks are white and the whites are black. You're gonna go down here to the bottom of your layers palette. There's a black and white circle, okay? This black and white circle is where all your filters live. This is all the adjustments that you're gonna to do to any picture. So to, to make it a negative, you're going to click on the word invert. Boom, you have a negative now. How cool is that? Okay, last step. 
Okay, now you need to save this so that you can turn it into me. Okay, so we're gonna go file. You're gonna go export because you're exporting it. You're sending it out into the world. You're gonna save this as a JPEG, okay? JPG, that is the universal file type. When you click right there, your Chromebook is gonna download the image onto the memory of your computer. Uh, this is gonna get downloaded in a moment. Okay, this thing is gonna come up, okay? And it's gonna ask you, hey, what quality do you want? Then put it all the way to high quality. And one more thing, see where it says attach metadata? Click on that. Let me explain to you what that is. This is saving all the camera information, like who shot it, when they shot it, uh, what were the camera settings. I need this information so that I know it is your picture and not from the internet. Then you're going to click save. And then the image is being saved to your Chromebook. When I ask you to turn this in later, you're gonna grab it from your Chromebook's memory and turn it into Google Classroom.